Hola amigos, I'm the Spanish chef Omar Rally Boy and before I start cooking today I wanted to thank you for all your kind messages and your requests on social media and so that you see that I read all the messages and I hear you and back by popular demand I'm going to be cooking croquetas de jamón, Spanish ham croquettes. One of the greatest tapas of all time. I certainly always order it when I go to a tapas bar. And, you know, I really think these little balls of deep fried bechamel were sent from heaven to make us mortals a little bit happier. But without further ado, let me run you through the ingredients. For the bechamel, we're going to need serrano ham, milk, bacon, which is a bit of the secret ingredient, butter, a bit of salt, nutmeg, white pepper, onion and plain flour, and then to coat the croquetas themselves, a bit more plain flour, eggs and breadcrumbs. To start with the bechamel, we're going to need a saucepan of some kind, it can be a smaller or larger, that doesn't matter, I'm using this one. And we're going to first start by adding the butter, so that it melts, and we're going to add the panceta or a smoked bacon so it renders down the fat a little bit with the butter before we go and chop the serrano ham and the onion. just added the onion to the butter and the bacon and on low heat as it is it will only take about five minutes to cook. Let me show you this ham. I bought exactly what you would get in any supermarket. Already sliced packets of serrano ham. What I'm going to do is to roll it over itself and sort of chop it very thinly, slice it very thinly. Then I will chop it after that. But the reason why I'm using the bacon is because this ham becomes very small, very small pieces because it's so thin when you cut it. And I like a bit of meatiness and a few chunks in there. And the only way of achieving that is by adding another meat. And that's where the bacon comes because it has such a lovely smoky flavor as well. And it becomes so tender after long stewing like we will do for an hour that it will become the perfect ingredient for my croquetas. Onion is now transparent as you can see and that's the perfect time to add the serrano ham. I'm going to cook it for three, four minutes yet again to let some of that fat from the ham to render down and then I'll be adding my spices and the flour. And on the meantime, I'm going to start by warming up the whole milk. The ham is now cooked, and I'm going to add a little bit of the nutmeg. You can find it in uh, its powder form already in the supermarket, but because I have it fresh, I like to add it. It brings a little bit more of aroma than when it's already been powdered. And now, a little bit of white paper, uh, white pepper. Sorry. Now I'm going to toast it for a second and add the flour, which I'm going to toast for five minutes, stirring constantly. The flour has already been toasted. Make sure you stir it constantly and you take a bit of time and put a bit of effort. And now it's when we're going to start forming the roux or the bechamel. So we're going to grab one ladle at a time and add it into the flour and give it a good mix until it's completely absorbed. And we're going to have to do this ladle by ladle until there is nothing left.
added the last bit of milk. It has taken me probably like five minutes and now it feels very, very runny, something like honey consistency. And now I will need to patiently steer for 30 minutes. Don't let it there sitting for longer than two minutes without steering it, otherwise it will burn on the bottom and it will stick and ruin your croquetas. So be patient and enjoy a glass of wine while we do this. And something really important is how you steer the croqueta. So start with the small circles in the middle of the pot and then sort of make them larger until you've catch every little bit of the whole surface of the bottom of your saucepan. 30 minutes are gone and this bechamel is ready. I know because of the texture, so come and take a look. The milk has reduced down and it's giving this very thick consistency. It no longer is, looks like honey. It feels a lot more thicker. And more importantly, I know that it's going to solidify when I put it into the fridge. That that's what we need to form the balls. And now is the right time to taste it and rectify it of any salt that it needs. And be very careful, there is no worse burns than bechamel and caramel in the kitchen. Mm, wow, that was good. <laughs> and it's absolutely fine with the salt, so I'm not going to add any more. And now I'm going to pour it into the mold and let it rest in the fridge. I have lined with parchment paper a cake tin in my case, because this is the mold that is going to be right for my bechamel, but you can use anything at home. Just make sure that whatever you pour it into, it gives you about two, three fingers thick and it will be a lot easier to roll your balls later on. Cover it so it doesn't create a dry skin and put it in the fridge for at least four hours. I've just taken the bechamel out of the fridge and it's completely set as you'll be able to see. Now I'm just going to remove this paper that is covering it. As you can see it comes out really well because it's uh, parchment paper. And if I sprinkle a little bit of flat flour on top of the worktop and I'm just going to flip it around and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more over the top to help me form the balls without sticking in my hands. Now with the help of a knife or any utensil that you have that is able to cut, I'm just going to cut this dough in three. Take a look. And I'm doing it in the sort of uh, width and shape that I want my croquetas to be. So to explain that better, take a look at what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut the dough into sort of perfect cubes, which then will become perfect round bowls. And it'll be a lot easier to do them than if I was scraping it from a, a spoon or something like that. This is actually a very professional way of doing them. Now, be ready to make a mess of yourself. But all you have to do is just roll them between both your hands, making, applying a little bit of pressure, but not much. Take a look. Not much flour as well, otherwise the coating will be too hard. And there is other ways you can do them two by two with both hands and helping yourself with the, with the worktop as well. As you can see, I've bowled a few in my life. All my croquettes are ready. And now you just need to dip them into the egg wash. Put a few in there. I'm using a saucepan. It's just very useful and very comfortable. And sort of saute them like if it was a wok and take a look at the result. Fully coated uh, croquettes in egg. Now grab them one by one and try to do this in one go so that you only have to wash your hands once. Otherwise, you'll end up with very thick fingers. And now, exactly the same. Just shake them in your breadcrumbs until they are completely coated. 
and it's time to fry the croquetas. All we have to do is to drop them into the hot oil, which is at around 180 degrees in case you have a deep fat fryer. Just do it carefully to make sure you don't burn yourself, you know, drop them from very close into the oil. And as you can see, I'm using a saucepan as opposed to a frying pan. And the reason is so that I keep it very contained as if it was a deep fat fryer. And I'm using as well a lighting color olive oil. After 90 seconds, the croquetas are ready. Just drain them into and pat dry them. And just so you know, every time to time, some croquetas will burst or even break. And doesn't matter, it's nothing to do with how good or bad your bechamel was. Finally, time to eat them. Let me break one for you. Oof, take a look at that creaminess. It's very hot, but I think I have to risk it at least a bit. Mm. So creamy in texture, so savory, even without salt. And what a hammy flavor, that, that's what we all love. Anyway, thanks very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I hope you tried for all of those of you out there who, who asked me to do it. And see you next time. Hasta pronto. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it on social media and subscribe.